Hey little crochet friends, welcome to Crazy Cool Crochet. In today's project we are going to work on the Diamond Bobbles Crochet Pillow Cover. And I've got an assortment of yarns here because I wanted to show you the difference in the different number four size yarns. It's really important for this particular pattern to use a thinner number four yarn. I started the project on this practice swatch and this was a number four I love this yarn super soft and it turned out really much bigger than I needed. It was way too big on the 18 by 18 pillow and this is very specifically a pattern for an 18 by 18 pillow. Because of the diamond shape it's really difficult for me to size it down so on the edges it's easy to do that to size it down because you just make a couple of rows less of the bobbles on the edges but the diamonds themselves this works for an 18 by 18 which is actually probably the most common size pillow size out there for decorative pillows so this will work out just fine now back to the yarns so I ended up having to let go of the I love this yarn I love this <laughs> I didn't mean to I, I really I do I love this yarn and it really is soft but again it was too big so then I started looking around for different yarns that would work better and I really like Heartland. I've used this by Lion Brand Yarns Heartland. I've used this on a lot of projects and the yarn is really soft. The colors are beautiful and it's the right thickness for this project. So if you want to use Heartland, feel free. It will work. But they didn't have the color that I needed. So I had to scrap that idea. And I ended up going with this Red Heart Soft and I got this at Michaels. Now do not confuse this with Red Heart Super Saver. This Red Heart Super Saver is also much too thick. Don't try that one. The Red Heart Soft from Michaels is the perfect thickness. So here you can see the difference. This is only three rows of the bobbles. This is four rows of the bobbles. And as you can see, the difference is pretty striking. And once this was completed into the full panel, it was just crazy big. It did not work. Stick with a thinner number four and you should be good to go. And then we'll also need an H hook or an 8.5 millimeter and a yarn needle and scissors. And this pillow features the twisted tassels which are so much nicer than just regular fringe. The regular fringe is very um, bohemian which is really hot right now. Boho super hot but it just didn't fit with this particular pillow design whereas the twisted tassels adds a very sophisticated touch it's much nicer I think a much nicer finishing look so try the twists it's really easy once you see how how to do that so let's go ahead and get started we are going to start with a chain of 62 and this is the easiest way I know to start the slip knot. Just twist the yarn, go from the front, twist the hook all the way around and when you do your first chain that forms the slip knot right there. 
So now we're going to do 62 chains. So that was one. And if you need help with the beginning stitches, I always leave a little white box up on top that you can click for the beginner tutorials. Then we're going to do two rows of single crochet starting in the second chain from the hook. So there's the first chain, there's the second. Enter the hook in the chain, pull up the yarn for two loops on the hook, pull the yarn through both loops, single crochet. So just do that in each chain across. We're at the end of the first row. This will be number 61. Don't forget that last chain. Chain one, turn, and then we will repeat for the second row of single crochets. You do start with the first space. So just continue across for 61 single crochets. At the end of that second row, chain one, turn. Now we're going to do three single crochets starting in the first space. And now we're going to do our first bobble. Yarn over for a double crochet. In the next space, start the double crochet, pull through, pull through the yarn for two loops, two loops on the hook. Yarn over for another double crochet in the same space, pull through the first two, three loops on the hook. Yarn over for another double crochet in the same space. Pull through the first two. Now you've got four loops on the hook. Yarn over for a double crochet in the same space. Pull through the first two loops. Now you've got five. Now pull through all five loops. And then do a chain to close off that bobble and then single crochet in the very next space. Once you do that single crochet, that forms the bobble on the other side. See, so you're working the bobbles on the wrong side and they are forming on the right side. Now we're going to do another bobble in the next space. Here's your five loops. Now pull through all five, do the chain to lock it, and now the single crochet in the next space. And we'll do that twice more. Another bobble in the next space. single in the next space, and then one more bobble in the very next space. If 
five loops, pull through all five, chain, and then we'll continue the pattern from there. So on each side we will do the same thing. Three single crochets to start and then the four bobbles with the single crochet in between. That single crochet next to the bobble is crucial. That's what brings the stitches together and forms that poof. Now we're going to single crochet in the next 10 spaces. And then bobble in the next space. And then nine single crochets. And then a bobble in the next space. And then nine single crochets. The single crochet that you are forming right next to the bobble that does count as number one. So it's one, two, three. And then another bobble. And then ten single crochets. Now just as we started, we're going to do the four bobbles. So it'll be a bobble, single crochet, bobble, single crochet, bobble, single crochet, bobble, and then three single crochets to end the row. When you get to the end of the row, chain one and turn. You will always chain one and turn at the end of each row. Now, the row after a bobble row, each time, is going to be a single crochet row. So you'll do a bobble row, single crochet row, bobble, single crochet row. And you will end up entering a single crochet in each space, starting with the first space. There's the third. Do not count that little tiny closing chain, the little chain that closes the stitches for the bobble. Do not count that. Do not enter in there. Go into the next chain. So you're going under the two strands. For a single. And then that single in between. Go in there. Don't go in the teeny tiny chain over there, go under the two strands, and then in each single crochet. So that's it, just go all the way across and you'll end up with 61 single crochets again. Right now we'll continue to row five. So at the end of that single crochet row, chain one and turn. We'll start the beginning of the row the same way each time with the three single crochets, bobble, single, bobble, single, bobble for four bobbles. Three single crochets and a bobble.
one single in between, another bobble. Now I forgot to mention at the very, very beginning, but I always try to remind folks to watch the video all the way through before you start the project. In case I made some suggestions along the way that would have been helpful at the beginning, and so you know what's coming ahead, it's always a good idea to watch the video all the way through. And in case I forget, like I usually do, I'm going to go ahead and ask you to please subscribe. Click the little button at the bottom, the little red button. And if you see the little bell, go ahead and click on the little bell so that you're notified when I have a new video. Don't worry, you will not be bombarded with any emails or anything like that. Never. But Crazy Cool Crochet and my blog, crazycoolcrochet.com, are my only sources of income. My crochet business is my only source of income. So every little bit helps. So your support by subscribing is so, so much appreciated. I've only got three. I need one more. And of course, the pattern will be uh, over in my Etsy shop. All the links to my blog, my Etsy shop, my um, social media pages, Facebook and such will be in the description area below, below the video, the white space. And you'll have to click either where it says show more or you'll see a little tiny, tiny arrow. You have to look for it. And you can click the little arrow. It opens up that description area. And that's where I also keep all the information, more detail regarding the yarn, the materials, where to purchase, all of that is in the description area. Okay, now we've got our four bottles. Now we're going to do nine single crochets. Then we'll do a bobble in the next space. Then a single in the next space. And another bobble in the next space. And then eight bobbles. I'm sorry, eight single crochets. And then a bobble. And then eight single crochets again. And then a bobble. Then a single and another bobble. Now we'll do nine single crochets. Now we're back to the end of the row, so now we're going to do bobble, single, bobble, single, bobble, single, bobble, and then the three single crochets at the end. We always start and end with those four bobbles. At the end of the row, as always, we chain one and turn. Okay, so now let's see what we've got going here. Okay, so we've got the four bobbles at the end. Now we're forming the bottom of our diamond. And then in the center, this one will always go straight up, just one line of bobbles. And then that second diamond, and then the four at the end. So that's it. So now in this next row, single crochets, and then we'll come back and continue. But if you're following the pattern yet, we started with 
10 on the edges and then on the next row of bobbles we reduce it 1 so that's 9 and the next one we'll reduce it so that'll be 8, 7, 6, 5 and then here in the diamonds we're going to be increasing in the center so we've got one single crochet here and the next row we'll have 3 and then 5 so in the diamonds we're increasing by 2 on each bobble row that one stays the same just one all the way up okay so on row 6 we did that row of single crochets now we're on row 7 and I did go ahead and complete the beginning because that's always the same and then we reduced by one so we did eight single crochets here the bobble increased by two in the center of the diamond so we did three single crochets now we're going to decrease by one in between the center bobbles so we will do seven single crochets bobble seven single crochets bobble two single crochets bobble then eight single crochets before we get to that end now please remember um, I will go ahead and keep going here along with you for a little bit but the written pattern might be easier to follow in this particular design so make sure that you go to crazycoolcrochet.com for the free pattern if you need a printed pattern then please go ahead and go to my Etsy shop which is crazy cool crochet us as in the united states crazy cool crochet us dot etsy dot com okay so i did up to the v or the um, diamond now we're going to do seven single crochets we're working towards that center so we do seven single crochets the bobble and seven single crochets again okay so we did that center area now we're going to work on that second diamond so we did the seven single crochets now a bobble for the diamond And then three single crochets. And then another bobble. And then eight single crochets. And then your four bobbles with the singles in between. And then the three singles at the end. And then after that row, we do that row of single crochet. And then the next bobble row, we reduce by one over here. So that'll be seven. We increase by two single crochets in the diamond. So that'll be five single crochets. And we decrease between the singles. So that'll be six single crochets, bobble six single crochets bobble five single crochets bobble and then the seven single crochets toward the end just keep working your way up when we get to the center of the V I keep calling it a V because it looks like a V <laughs> when we get to the center of the diamond I'll come back and then we'll work our way towards the top of the diamond Okay, now for row 11, we did six singles 
and then seven in the diamond, and then five on each side of the center bubbles, and then seven single crochets in the diamond, and then six single crochets towards the end, and then of course your bobbles over here, and then the three at the end. Okay, so I hope you're following how the pattern is increasing and decreasing. Decrease by one on each end, increase by two in, in the diamonds, decrease by one in the center, decrease by one here, decrease by one here, increase by two in the diamond, decrease by one at the end, Keep going. Okay, now for row 13, we're doing five single crochets in the edge, nine single crochets in the diamond, four on each side of the single bubbles, nine in the diamond, and then five towards the end. And of course your usual four and three. Four bobbles, three singles. Okay, now for row 15, we did four single crochets, and then 11 in the diamond, and then three on each side of the singles, then 11 again in the diamond, and then 4 on the end. Then in row 17, did 3 single crochets, then 13 in the diamond, 2 on each side of the bobble in the center, 13 again in the diamond, and then three at the end, before the bobbles at the end. Now for row 19, we're doing two singles, and then 15 in the diamond, and then one single crochet in the center, on the on each side of the center bobbles, then your 15 single crochets in the diamond, and then the two before you get to the last four bobbles. And of course you're still doing those three at the end. Okay, now we're at the center of the diamond. So now we're going to start bringing the diamond back up. So this time we'll be increasing on this side, decreasing in the diamonds, increasing in the center, decreasing in the diamonds, increasing. Okay, now you can see where the diamond is coming back up to the point at the top. So now for row 21, we did three singles over here, 13 inside the diamond, two in between the center bobbles, 13 inside the diamond, and then three over here. Then row 23, we're doing four singles over here, 11 inside the diamond, three on each side of the center, 11 inside the diamond, and then four at the end. Row 25, we're doing five 
over here, nine inside the diamond, four single crochets on each side of the single bobble, nine inside the diamond, and then five on the end. And then continue with the four and the three at the beginning and at the end, of course. Now don't forget, you're still doing those single crochet rows in between. In between each bobble row, there's a single crochet row. So just keep going, decreasing and increasing until we get to the top, to the point. Okay, here's what it looks like when the diamond is completed. Really nice. Okay, so to continue on row 27, we ended up doing six single crochets on the edge, seven in the diamond, five on each side of the center bobble, seven in the diamond, and then six at the end. And for row 29, we single crochet seven on the edge, five in the diamond, six on either side of the center bobble, five again in the diamond, and then seven on the edge. Then for row 31, we're doing eight towards the edge, three in the diamond, seven single crochets on each side of the center bobble, three in the diamond, and then eight on the other end. And row 33, we're doing nine single crochets, then one single crochet in between the two bobbles in the diamond, eight single crochets on each side of the center bobble, one single crochet in the diamond, and then nine on the end. Then for the last row, row 35, and this is the last row of this diamond. Do 10 single crochets, and then just the bobble at the top of the diamond, nine single crochets on each side of the center bobble, just the one bobble in the diamond, and 10 single crochets on that end. Now after that, all you're going to do is go back to the beginning and repeat. Rows three, which started that first bobble row, through 35, where we just ended at the top of the diamond. So you're just repeating the entire diamond one more time to complete the panel. Well, after that second diamond, then you will do two rows of single crochet to finish off the panel. Right, you will end that first panel with two rows of single crochet. You'll end up on the wrong side. Do your last single crochet, number 61 chain two, then leave a good size tail, maybe five inches or so, and then cut off the yarn. Then pull the yarn through, and then squeeze down to form a nice tight knot. First panel is done. Now for the second panel, for the back panel, you're just going to do a solid panel of single crochets. So you will start with a chain of 62 and then the row of single crochets which will come to 61 single crochets, chain one turn and then the second row and each row thereafter start in the first space and single crochet in each space for 61 single crochets. And here is the finished back panel. So you did 61 single crochets across the row for 71 rows. 
to match up with the front panel. Now take care not to use too tight of a tension because the bobbles on the front panel actually render the panel a little bit taller, a little bit longer than the back panel. So make sure when you're doing the back panel to use a little bit looser tension. Okay, now we're going to attach the two panels and we've got right sides touching each other. The wrong sides are facing out. And the wrong side, well it's obvious on the front panel. The back panel, the wrong side will be where you started, actually that's the right side, where you started your foundation chain. There's the tail from the foundation chain. So this is the right side. So put right sides together. I start at the top, corner to corner, and you will take your yarn needle with a length of yarn, and we're just going to seam around the three sides. We leave the top open so we can insert the pillow. So you just insert the yarn in the corners the needle. I tie these two pieces together, the tail, both tails, and knot them. And then go under two strands on each side. And that's all you do. So just keep bringing the yarn around. But that's it, just do that. Go under two strands all the way around. Then insert the pillow. Well, turn it right side out, insert the pillow, and then use the same seaming method on the top. And it doesn't matter that the right side will now be facing you. The seam will still be hidden. It will just blend right into the yarn into the uh, chains on top. Now for the tassels, just take an object, I'm using a little paperback, and it should be about six, seven inches long, and then just wind the yarn around the book or the object a whole bunch of times. This is just enough to give you an idea of what, what we're doing. And then we're going to Cut along the bottom. Now depending on the thickness of the twisted tassels that you prefer, take an even number of strands. So I'm taking four here. Fold it in half. We're working along the sides of the pillow. So just insert the hook along the seam. And bring it back through. Grab the yarn, all four tassels, all four strands. Pull it through. Pull up a loop wide enough so you can grab all the tassels and bring them through the loop. I should say all of the strands. And then tighten it up a little bit. It will form its own knot at the top. Now take the strands and divide them in half. There's four on each side, and then just turn it over itself. So take the one set of strands, wind it around, you're going to want this to be fairly tight.
you don't want it to do that. You don't want it to be curling up like that. That's too tight. Now when you get to the bottom, don't lose control of it. Leave about an inch and a quarter tail. Then take the longest strand. This happens to be that one. Wind it around. So we're going to want to bring it around and knot it. Okay, so you've got like a little loop right there. So grab your hook. I should have grabbed a smaller hook for this. And bring the yarn through. So you can tighten it. Now as far as I'm concerned, that's not tight enough for me. I'm the one that likes the knots. Okay, don't lose control of that. Okay, so I'm going to take another strand and knot it with the first strand. And then tie it. That makes me feel better. <laughs> okay. Now you can let go and it will unwind into a nice looking tassel there, the twisted tassel. Okay, then you can trim this. I'm going to trim it fairly small so that it's about a half inch maybe. And that's it. So just keep making a whole bunch of these to go all the way across, all the way down the side, each side. Only the sides, not the top. 